up everybody once again it's brand man sean and this video right here is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because i signed myself now this is a snippet of an upcoming interview i did with an artist by the name of wasu and ghost and man they touch on another route to build a fan base another route to blow up that i hear a lot of people talk about or they don't realize is a real option and you don't have to be called an industry plant to do it yo i i knew this shit was working because like yo like suddenly like double xl fucking posted one of the tracks i was like okay yeah we, we got this and then right after that empire hollered at us yeah it's a distribution deal back in 2015 so we got that and then fucking like i'm looking at like the st like uh the stat trackers or whatever and i see like warner music group and shit is like checking checking the website and shit like uh the 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 the, the tumblr and shit and then i'm like all right so we're actually making noise and people are actually looking out for us so then wait one 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 real important thing that you did because someone asked me is this a thing that you can do like they, they were like instead of just releasing music should i just wait till i build connections and things like that and then release and i said that's definitely an option like they, they they thought they had to just keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping, and, and and then build up that way, and then get connections. But I know I told them there's a lot of people I know that were they might have just been a photographer, or a videographer, or, but what but for whatever reason it might not have been their strategy, but they got a lot of connections. And then when they decide to be an artist, it it set them up on a whole different platform. It sounds like you guys were able to do that, except especially Ghost, you know, being a manager that's actually on their stuff. Like you got to focus on that heavily while, you know, you got to just focus on becoming a better artist and getting all that stuff together, which is, that's the benefit of course, having a team everybody doesn't have. I mean, well, I mean, it's just two people, but it's still a, a duo. I don't know if it's technically a team, whatever number that, that takes, but like that's, that's the benefit of having a manager that's really doing their stuff. Cause there's a lot of managers uh, that I look, they just, they just aren't there and they don't understand it. I'm not even gonna say they're bad managers when we're talking about young developing ones, but I don't think people understand the importance for the manager to be out in that scene. You're the manager's a sales guy, basically. Bro, you like, gotta be kid, you gotta chase it down all the time. You gotta understand the culture, you know what I'm saying? Like, Keitra and all of them, like, I became friends with them, you know what I'm saying? They saw me, I understand the beats, like, when he gets his shit mixed. It's as if like they were going to release their own instrumental tracks. That's exactly how that they would want it mixed. They want their kick, the Montreal sound, like the kicks and the snares got to be the loudest shit. You know what I mean? Like the way our mixes are, people don't know this because they're from outside of the city, but like we have a very, very specific type of song when yeah. it comes to like mixing our beats down. So like mm -hmm. I embody this whole shit, this whole Montreal culture, this whole beat scene and shit. I embody that shit because I've been in the mud with all of them. You know what I'm saying? I got my respect from all of them, like Lunas, like tight with, you know what I'm saying? He produced uh, Blood on the Loose by Kanye. Well, he was one of the producers on, on that track. And it's just like, yo, I know the whole entire scene. And I was like, yo, once this shit comes out, I, I'm gonna have everybody's support, you know what I mean? I, I, I was like, yo, we can't rely on one strategy. We gotta attack it every single way. I was like, I gotta attack the fashion wave. I gotta attack the, the internet wave. I gotta attack the Montreal wave. I just got to take all these scenes and like, it's like spirit bomb from like Dragon Ball Z and shit. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 what do y'all mean by the fashion wave? Cause I think I know what you mean, but I don't want people to miss it. So when you say you have to attack the fashion wave, what does that look like? And why would you attack the fashion wave? Cause like, yo, um, like I came off of the hype beast forums, you know what I'm saying? Like Tyler, the creator, like he's not the first person to rock Supreme, but like he made it a trend in the mainstream. You know what I'm saying? That was the thing in high, on the Hypebeast forums, everyone was rocking Supreme. But he became like the face of Hypebeast at that period of time. Around the same time, like a year later, ASAP Rocky off of the forums and off of the OVO uh, blog and shit like that, like he blew up off of the fashion wave as well. And uh, it's just that I was like, yo, since I'm already killing this fashion shit online, yo, I joined Tumblr and I was, and I was like, I hate Tumblr. But I was like, yo, let me see if I can do something. So I posted like a few outfits and I went Tumblr viral. So like, okay, I can do this shit. Then I shut down my Tumblr after a month after that. So then I was like, oh, I got to translate this shit. So the first music video, yo, there's like $40,000 worth of outfits in that, that music video. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just like mm. killed that shit. And that's why when it got posted on Hypebeast, yeah. it stayed in the top five, like, news story section for like a week. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like, I just wanted every single demographic I could, I could get. You know what I'm saying? 
that's what I, I that's why I like when, when people focus on and realize that there's these adjacent communities that's not just like the music community and you could cap off of these adjacent communities whether that's a lot of basketball players will like my music so I'm going to be an athlete in a in the locker room and all my homies because I'm in that world or whether it's fashion or whether it's just uh, videography photography uh there'll be just so many like random different like categories that you were gaming all and there's you know sub categories within each of these categories but people don't realize there's so many other communities it's hard as a matter of fact the music category is the hardest because one when you're telling them to check for your music they're less likely to check for your music right or when you come in as i'm and you're competing with other rappers or other artists so it's a different space especially in a city like everyone everyone's a fucking rapper so it's like yeah what's gonna make me listen to you other than the 30 other niggas that I just saw on the bus. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. sometimes you gotta get, get to it. Now, of course, again, you can always click the link in the description to go to the full interview. Once that interview has dropped, if it hasn't dropped, that link ain't gonna go nowhere. People always ask me about that. But my two cents about that clip is really just remembering that you can take the time to just build your connections first and then blow up after that, right? You build this collection that's in the culture, you can insert yourself somewhere in culture, get yourself known, your face known, so now you have supporters. And this guy, Ghost, went out there and did it in many different parts of culture. When we, in the full interview, he really gets into it. These dudes are hustlers, and if you want to actually blow up with less money, connections are gonna be a key to that. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have to make connections anyway, so a lot of you guys, why not be a little bit more patient, spend two, three years if you're early on like that, because that's what they were doing when they would be in, you know, quote unquote college, spending that time, building heavy relationships. And once it was time to drop, you know, I sue had the music. He had been developing himself and bam, there goes some visibility. They're getting the XXL noisy and all these things in a short period of time. It's something to consider. I love the way these guys think it's definitely worth watching the full interview. If you like this video, not only do we have videos like this that get dropped early, we have tons of exclusive content and resources for artists and marketing and branding. We get you branded right and then we get you focused on how to blow up specific to your brand. And of course, also, if you like this video, you might as well hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.